So if they, if you ever hear the words like body count, high, if they ever refer to themselves as a high value man, if they say the words alpha male, run. Oh, good man will refer to themselves as an alpha male, but every guy who loves red pill content will refer to themselves as an alpha male and they'll call other guys beta males. What the hell is red pill content? Okay, red pill is all the misogyny. Red pill, you cheat, you make money, you provide, you don't listen to a woman. A big on, you don't listen to a woman. We all have masculine and feminine energy within us. What's the difference? How do we tap into our feminine as women? There's a lot of arguments about whether a man should pay on the first date. I, okay, but, but I do think a man should pay. If a man expects sex, then he should pay on the first date, is what I think. What? I think so. Wait, why because is this got anything woman, to do with sex? Because you made a clip, actually, saying that men and women can't be friends. I fundamentally disagree with that clip. So here's the thing. Hey, this is Cassia West. Welcome to Millennial Mind. I really hope you guys all enjoy this podcast. It's one that we really dive delve into narcissism, toxic relationships, what a high value woman and a man is, and just so much more. So Mm -hmm. before we get into it, we just have one tiny favor for you all to do. Please like, share, subscribe, follow, just do all the things that we need you to do to help us grow this platform. Thank you. Bye. Cassia. Yes. Welcome to Millennial Mind. Oh, thank you, madame. Your British accent is not very good. Okay? I know, I need a lot of work. I'm going to London this this month, so I'm going to work on it. But I'm happy that you're here. Me too. I am very excited to get into this conversation. Mm-hmm. And I want to start with why you're so passionate about speaking about relationships, misogyny, mm-hmm. red flags, yeah. red pills, pink pills. Yeah, all the what, pills. What does it mean? Okay. So I never even really thought about it like of course I thought about relationships like I've been in a lot of relationships in my life so that's like kind of how I like have any kind of awareness of Mm -hmm. how to give people advice on this but it all started out with just my husband and I wanting to help people spiritually so he and I wrote a book on Buddhism put it out he was doing YouTube videos and then we started the podcast and it was new society podcast so it's really about like society like where society's at and um you know, why people are unhappy type of thing. And then so we started putting it out on TikTok. And then as soon as we put it out, we just happened to put one out that was about relationships. And it was about how men are different than women emotionally or are different than women in terms of how they're able to listen um, as opposed to how women listen. You know, just the differences between men and women. I actually read a book in one day, the day of the, our first podcast, I read this entire book cover to cover about relationships, difference between men and women. So that one like blew up and we only had posted three videos. So it was like that one did a million with like no followers. Wow. So we're like, okay, clearly um, where social media is at is they want to talk about relationships. So I'm like, I really don't want to focus on that. I was so trying not to pigeonhole into that. Mm. And then, but I'm like, whatever, you got to do what works. And immediately I saw that there's this huge contingency of misogyny on yes. social media. And a lot of girls don't really know it. But I started to see because, you know, a lot of girls would say to me like, oh, my boyfriend started to be really um, nasty to me. He would tell me he would be mean to me if I didn't have dinner waiting for him. He would be mean to me if I wasn't sexual with him right away, would like do whatever he wanted sexually. Just have this, like all of a sudden he changed and I kept hearing this. And then I would have guys commenting on my stuff where I actually in the beginning was so unbiased. Like I was saying things that were Honestly, men could be using as a way to explain to their girlfriends, their wives, as to why they are the way they are, Mm. why they maybe don't listen. Because men actually, you know, I think the video was like about how men can't listen at the same time that they're talking. So I'm like, I really was trying to explain to women why men are the way that they are. Right. But men are so, like on social media, so used to being misogynistic that they just attacked me because I'm a woman. 
And then every single video I was putting out. Now, luckily, slowly, I've gotten a 99% female audience. So I don't have to deal with it so much because women are so much kinder on social media. But I just got to see that even the women on social media are misogynistic. Like, you know, the whole Andrew Tate. So you, mm. you had known who Andrew Tate was? 100%. Yeah. like The worst. I actually. Okay. Did you know who Kevin Samuels is? No. Okay. So he was this guy. He came before Andrew Tate. Right. And it's so messed up. But this actually kind of goes along the lines with manifestation because it literally makes me feel like I'm like, this is my own reality. Okay. So I was driving the car with my husband. He was like telling me about Kevin Samuels and how nasty, misogynistic, disgusting. And I was like, he needs to go down. He died the next day. Yeah. What? Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. <clears throat> well, that was, I was like, I was like, are you, are you kidding me? So yeah, he, he died while he was, I think, doing drugs with a stripper or something. And he was all like the most misogynistic person. Now, right after that, then, um, Andrew Tate pops up. I find out about him. I find out about, you know, all these young girls who are in these relationships where these guys are just treating them like, you know, nothing like nothing just like they're using these girls and they're just acting like they they just have this voice in their head because it just became the culture that most women didn't know about so once again i'm like well he needs to go down too and guess what he got arrested a week later for trafficking women and all these guys want to defend him and it's 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 psychotic and you know there's a female who will not be named that i've also had some altercations with that I didn't realize was, you know, dripping with misogyny and saying things that – because the issue with all of it is, like, they all have things that they say that could be logical. Right. It's like you could understand a little bit where they're coming from. Yes. So they'll send their girlfriends um, these videos of these guys or even these women like her. Mm where they'll be basically defending the actions of these guys. So, like, right. they'll be defending liking girls' pictures on social media, talking to their exes, being abusive, being like, literally being abusive, being nasty to their girls. And they'll send it to their girlfriends, and their girlfriends will have no ammunition, nothing to say back. Because all these guys, for some reason, respect is a clip on TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube. That's, like, what they think is a book at this point. Like, that's, like, the new generation that's, like, okay, like, if someone has a microphone in front of them, like, they have the authority to speak on it. So I'm, like, okay, I can buy a microphone. I actually have one. I have a podcast. So bet I will be talking about it. So I started realizing because so many, like, it just blew up so fast. And it was all because girls did not have a – they didn't have ammunition. They didn't have something to send to their man. And of all the millions and millions of reshares I was getting, I found out that most of them was girls sending it to their boyfriends, being like, well, guess what? This is why you shouldn't still be following your ex-girlfriend on social media. This is why you shouldn't be nasty to me in public. This is why you should be on my side when I feel like this girl is hitting on you. Why? You know, so like... I started to get so passionate, like, so, and, you know, I'm not feminist. Like, the the men that are, like, real men, I love them. Like, I love the duality, masculine, feminine. Like, I think there needs yes. to be that duality, and it's amazing when you're actually a real man. But these guys are just the worst. Like, have you seen any of the stuff of what they say to defend themselves about why they're – DMing girls on Instagram while they're following them, while no. they're like liking Instagram models. Okay. Well, that's what Instagram is made for. Oh, well, I just like everything. Oh, well, it's automatic. Um, oh, I've known her from high school. Like, and I'm like, okay. And when, for some reason, when their girlfriends give them the response back to that, they don't listen. Mm. But when it's something with like, 
you know, the guy is sending the girl a podcast. So she's like, fine, I have one right back for you. And the reason you're liking it automatically is because you do it all the time. It's like mm-hmm. riding a bike. If you do it all the time, it's going to be automatic. Right. And also, if the app is made for that, why do you have it? Why do you have it? And it's just like, to me, this stuff should have been so obvious. But for some reason, there hasn't been like many females motivated to be on the opposing end Give the of these side, misogynist yeah. guys. Mm. So I was like, gladly. So many things you just said there. First of all, why did you say you're not a feminist? What would you define as feminism? Honestly, that's the thing. Like, you could, I think everyone could be a feminist, but I just don't like terms that maybe uh, limit what you could be or maybe have associations with something because there shouldn't even be a term for it is my problem. No one should have to be defending women. There Mm. shouldn't have to be, oh, I'm a feminist. Mm. why are people attacking women that there should even be this term what i think is because we just are not equal you know yeah oh and there is absolutely <clears throat> inequality right. there's inequality with so many things and it's like you don't know until you know mm. even like with racism like there's certain things like i wasn't even aware so much how racist even new york can be yes um like i was going into a club with a friend of mine and another friend was like oh actually we can't go in because of her and she was not white and we were like well we're not (laughs) coming in like that's insane and it was just so casual Mm -hmm. but it's the same thing like against women and obviously like there's a there's a pay gap but there's just so much that men men generally don't respect women but at the same time they're obsessed with them Like, that's their entire lives. But what's insane is that back in the day, misogyny was like, you know, maybe they didn't trust a woman to do their taxes. Right. But they still were obsessed with women and they wanted them. And nowadays, it's getting to the point where these guys are not even talking about women in that way. They're just calling them sluts. Like, they're just saying, oh, what's your body count? Have you heard about this body count stuff? Yes. I'm like, literally shut up. Shut up. They're jealous. First of all, I want to ask you, what is misogyny? What's the definition of someone being misogynistic? Because liking a girl's photo and re-following your ex on Instagram doesn't mean you're misogynistic, does it? No, but misogyny is just constantly seeing women as below you. And that is what they do. They look at a woman and they will never see an equal. They will constantly look at you as an object. And But what I'm saying before is that at least at that point, they looked at you as a desirable object. And it's getting to the point where misogyny is turning into, like, they're looking at you as an object that they hate. And they're mostly doing that because they can't have whatever they want. Right. So they hate you for it. Like, if you don't just give them whatever they want, like, and what they want is sex, then they hate you. And this entire rhetoric is going around the lines of, well, you should hate women because all they want is a man with money. And I will say that there's a, there's some things on, uh, the women's side that I think shouldn't be perpetuated. I don't think okay. so many women should be saying things like that, that like, oh, a guy should be this tall. He should yes. have this much money. I think it's nasty to mm. say those things. I think it should be a preference and it should be a quiet preference. Yes. But like at the same time, none of the, like most of these girls, when they really like sit down and think about it, they're going for the guy that they love, the guy that makes them laugh, the guy mm. that, you know, they're happy with. But that's not the thing that goes viral. So they're going to say things online like, oh, like I need a rich man, like blah, blah, blah. And they're posting things like, you know, they're not posting the downside of being with a rich man. Exactly. That doesn't care for them. It's just bringing them on a trip. So all we have is social media right now where it's like guys hating women for not putting out for them because they don't have the means to supply the life that these girls are posting on social media. And these girls are not posting the negative side of what they're having to deal with in order to get the things that they're posting on social media. We're seeing this a narrative online of a high value man. Mm-hmm. What is a high value man? And what is a high value woman? Okay. So th- this is the problem. It's one of the problems. Like, they're all just saying, oh, well, have you watched the videos? Like, do you know, like, uh, Pearl? No. She's, oh, you don't know Pearl? P- she's Pearl. No. Pearl uh, it's pearly things. Okay. Oh, she's, she's just a blatant misogynist. Like, her whole, it, it's in with Andrew Tate. It's that whole thing. So what they say 
is that a high value man is someone who has, and I'm doing this quotations just so I don't get caught out here. In yeah. clip. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> high value. Um, so a high value man is someone who has money and basically is allowed to cheat because he has money. Oh my God. I've mm-hmm. had this. Mm-hmm. I've had this. And it's just like, I'm sorry. So this is an adult man who can't be honest with a woman and say, I don't want to be in a relationship. So we're basically talking about uh, your your first boyfriend who cheated on you. That maturity level is a high value man is what mm. is what they want to say. No, a high value man is. I don't know. That depends on who's who's asking, you know, yeah. like to me, someone who's valuable in my life. Um, and that always depends on each stage in your life. Like to me, my husband's a high value man. Yeah. When we met, he didn't have that much money at all. Um, he didn't come from money, but what I found valuable is that he was self-made. He's funny. We have fun together. He ended up making a lot of money. Um, you know, to someone else, he's so low value because they'd be like, I would never be able to go out as much as he does. Like, this is like, I cannot deal with this. Like, everyone has their own version of what value is. Yeah. But we're just deeming high value as a man who can provide. But if you have a high value man, then you have to let him cheat on you is basically the rhetoric right now. I've heard, actually, that that element of cheating because I heard someone say, well, you know, it's been around for, for our lifetimes. You know, men have always had mistresses. It's a very common thing. Even mm-hmm. the royal family have mistresses. It's just something that women have to accept. The thing is, there's different types of relationships. There's relationships where, you know, the the husband and the wife are with women together. There's swinger relationships Mm. where they, like, swap couples. There's relationships where you have an agreement, where you say to your woman, listen, I'm in a relationship with you. You're my number one, but I have people that I sleep with on the side. That's an arrangement that if you're a real high-value man, you feel comfortable saying to a woman, and if you don't have the balls to say that, then you're not a high value man. Right. But this is not this is not what's talked about. It's just like, oh, you could cheat. Grow up. Like, what is the value in saying to someone, I love you, I want to be in a relationship, let's get married, but also I'm gonna lie to you. Mm. Oh, high value men are liars, excuse me. I think this is the problem with with a lot of these people online. They say something so ridiculous like this, and then they'll come back with it with like a very like logical perspective. Not mm-hmm. this situation exactly, but you know they'll they'll start to talk around history and all these other things. Which in that element, kind of like I'm not saying in this example makes sense, but I've heard some of the things that he says, and I'm like that kind of does make sense what exactly. he's saying in this one point. Mm-hmm. But does that mean that that takes away from all these disgusting things that he said around like women being beat up and women being cheated on and all of this other stuff in terms of like rape and like it's just yeah. sickening. So I do think that what what are some of the red flags that you would say that women are pointing out that has happened in the last few years in their relationships when they're hearing all of this stuff online okay so red flags in terms of like dealing with listening to someone like andrew tate so that they're now adopting in their relationship red flag of the man you're with or red flag okay so first thing you need to do is like slowly like point at like ask things to see if they listen to red pill content so if they if you ever hear the words like body count high if they ever refer to themselves as a high value man if they say the words alpha male run red flag because like this is no no good man will refer to themselves as an alpha male but every guy who loves red pill content will refer to themselves as an alpha male and they'll call other guys beta males wait what the hell is red pill content okay red pill is all the misogyny red pill is like oh if you're an alpha male then you don't cook and (sighs) you know it's basically like the values from the 50s but on steroids because it's so funny it's like you know you cheat you um you make money you provide you don't listen to a woman a big on you don't listen to a woman big on you don't listen to a man it got it's to the point where like they won't even let a girl like pick out clothes for them 
Like, they're like, I'm not dressing for you. It, it's borderline homosexual, I'm not going to lie, which is what's crazy about it because they're just trying to be – and not that there's anything wrong with it. Yeah. But they're not getting the fact that they literally hate women at this point. Like, red pill is, like, misogyny. Just – they just hate women. They just do. They really, really despise them. And it's it's really out of jealousy. Out of jealousy? It's jealous. Okay, there's so many layers of jealousy. Okay it's jealousy that they are not able to be as free as a woman in terms of like a woman can you know they don't have as many privileges as a woman so they feel like women can go out and get whatever they want they can get free drinks they can have their apartment paid for because they're a woman so they're jealous they're jealous that they can um be sexual with whoever they want and men you know i will give it to them it's hard it's hard to go out and like find a woman to come home with you Mm. um so but they're not expressing that and they also don't have anyone that's giving them advice on it like back back in the day before red pill content there was a lot of content that was actually helping guys get girls and nowadays that doesn't exist so it's literally just let's hate women because we can't be with them we're jealous of the fact that they can be sexual and we can't what if someone said your content was just hating men? I would say then actually listen to my podcast because it's not at all. And it's just um, I don't hate men. I love real men. Mm. I lo- like m- I, I'd say I have like 50 50 like male and female like friends like and without, y- you know, I, I always it's just like. Without a male aspect, like without that, without that masculinity, mm. it's, it's not the same. Like, you know, it, it plays off of each other. And it's, it's the same thing, like within each person, like everyone has a masculine and feminine qualities. And yes. I would say, like, I might come across a little feminine, but I've always felt very masculine. And maybe that's the reason that I have a lot of pushback to it because it's like, honestly, I know how to mu- be a much better man than a lot of these guys. I think what you just said in terms of, you know, you don't hate men, it can come across like that when we're talking about our experiences or when Mm -hmm. we're defending women. If you defend women, it comes across as if you hate men. And people think that about my content too, because I'm against rushing to get married because I believe that a woman has more to herself than goals of getting married. Absolutely. People think I never wanted to get married. So when I got Mm -hmm. engaged, people were like, wait, what? I I know you hate marriage. I'm like, same. Why? Literally when I posted my husband, they were like, wait, I thought we hate men. I'm like, no, we don't hate men. No, no. We don't like the bad men. Yes, exactly. It's it's quite clear to us, but I think that people do expect you to be on one side or the other. Mm -hmm. You mentioned there talking about masculine and feminine. Yeah. We all have masculine and feminine energy Mm -hmm. within us. What's the difference? So I think there are certain qualities and they really do mesh into each other. But to me, femininity is very much about empathy, intuition, nurturing. But masculinity is a little bit more taking control, which in a lot of ways can be nurturing. Mm. Um, And there is, you know... A real masculine man has that feminine backing because it needs to be a balance. It's that whole yin and yang. If you're a masculine guy and it's only masculinity, it falls so flat. To me, like the most masculine man is the one who is also nurturing, intuitive, compassionate. You know, you need to have that duality Mm. in order to make it work because you know you we all know the guy that's just like he deems himself just masculine yes and you just can't really you can't relate to it you can't take it too seriously and sometimes it's just you know there's some people like that it's totally fine but even with women to me the like the most feminine women are the women who are half masculine Right. You know, like the strongest women, the women who are like very take charge. You don't have to be making your own money or doing whatever, but just like having a certain dominance as a woman somehow makes you even more feminine. And for a man, having that empathy and really like taking care of a woman makes you even more masculine. How do we tap into our feminine as women? Because sometimes it can get lost, especially I think yes. in this world where we are all told to be in our masculine, to be go-getters, to create our own paths, to create mm-hmm. our own careers. 
we sometimes have to be, you know, the times yeah. have changed. And whilst I think I am sometimes in my feminine, I would say a majority of the time I'm in my masculine. So mm-hmm. how does somebody who has been raised to be in their masculine or you know, hyper independent tap into their feminine energy? To me, I think it's just something that happens naturally. And if it doesn't happen naturally, then you shouldn't even think about it. Okay. So... I was raised, I think I was raised to be a boy. I think my dad just like wanted a boy. Um, and I naturally just got a little bored with being too masculine and I just wanted to explore the feminine side. So I really was just having fun with it. So I think mm. basically just finding things that you find fun in femininity. So if you think that makeup is fun, if you think that perfume and doing your hair and doing a makeover and trying different clothes is fun, mm then do that. But also, I really think that femininity comes down to those emotional characteristics, like I was saying, like being nurturing. So it definitely comes down to how you treat yourself. So if you're not nurturing to yourself, I don't think you can tap into your feminine because you're not going to be able to be nurturing to other people. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, that's, that's the biggest part. And once you can tap into that nurturing quality, I think everything else just completely flows through that because even like when you're doing your makeup when you're doing like girly things it's all nurturing yourself right and you can't you just can't do that if you if you don't have this like deep love for yourself and i think that's like the biggest part of being feminine is just having this like huge love for yourself and your body and you know just femininity as Mm. as a whole just you know i don't know yeah, we are we are seeing at the moment though a lot of masculine women and mm-hmm. a lot of feminine men. Yeah. Why is that a problem? I don't think it's a problem at all. I mean like I think there's a I honestly wish there was more feminine men because you know, a lot of the really masculine men are causing a lot of problems. But we're not noticing that the real feminine men are the ones that are being bitchy towards women as Mm. if they're in competition with them. Why? That's the issue. But, you know, I think it's really good for women to explore their masculinity in order to get that balance and really find their own femininity. Mm. Um, And for men, too. I think everyone should, like explore the depths of either side of their masculine and feminine energy in order to like find where they want to end up on the spectrum and honestly it could be different on different days like some days like i want to dress really girly and some days i absolutely can't stand it and i want to dress like a boy and i want to feel dominant and i want to act like whatever and then some Mm. days i want to act like prissy and nurturing and like housewife right so it's just i think it's way more of a spectrum that you just have to you know try out every day a lot of people i know they're getting frustrated with attracting men who don't take charge who want the woman to do everything Mm -hmm. who perhaps don't make decisions about anything perhaps are just very laid back and they see that as very a feminine man is that true you know i think we i think people get really stuck on certain things that people do especially because of social media you know they'll see like a 30 second clip where it says oh if a guy doesn't plan dates then he's not masculine and i don't think that that's true because i actually think that planning a date is really feminine does it not seem like a very feminine thing to do to plan where you're going to dinner no for me it's like organized so i'm like you are taking control yeah you've organized it but there's certain things there's certain times you know i think in the beginning it's nice for a guy to take charge. Correct. But it gets to a certain point in the relationship where I think it's perfectly fine for the woman to take charge in that. Yeah, especially I think both. when they have yeah. balance in their like especially if the guy is paying for everything. Okay, yeah. What's the matter with the girl planning the trip? You know, like does the guy really have to like find the most aesthetic restaurant? It seems effeminate to me. And this is what I mean about mm. preference is like to me I really don't think I don't look to my husband to do that anymore. Whereas like in the very beginning he did. And now if I thought of him doing that, I'm like, what are you a girl? Like, no, that's my job. Right. Yet I haven't worked in four years. He's been paying the bill, you know, for he's been paying for everything for years. So it's like, yeah. that's just not really his role right now. But if I just had this thing in my mind where like, no, like a masculine man finds where we go on a date he'd probably get frustrated at some point and I really wouldn't be being myself and he wouldn't be able to be himself. 
But do you feel like we're not putting people in boxes here? Like he should pay and you should find the restaurant. And that's and do what the I'm admin. saying. Yeah. Is that's this that's that's the problem is like right. is the boxes. And I think we're reading too much into these little things. Mm. Like, oh well, I don't know if I'm interested in this guy. Like my best friend was just messaging me today about this trip that she went on with this guy. And he you know, he's dealing with his business right now. He wasn't paying as much as she would really like him to, and he wasn't right. planning the dates. And I was like, you know, I totally get that that could potentially be an issue down the line, but also you never know where it's going to go with him. And are you just looking at him as like, you know, are you creating roles based on these, you know, like check boxes yeah. that you have in your head of what a man should be? Mm. And there's, people also go through stages. Like, you know, my husband really didn't have it like that mm. when we first met. So, like, had I crossed him off right in the beginning just because – I watched a few videos that said, this is what a masculine man is. This is what they do. This is what they pay for. This is what their apartment should look like. Then it never would have gone well. But now, mm. like... There's a lot of arguments about whether a man should pay on the first date. I, okay, but... But I do think a man should pay. If a man expects sex, then he should pay on the first date, is what I think. What? I think so. Wait, why because is this got anything woman, to do with sex? Because they are... not Not that they're sleeping together on the first date. Yeah. No, no, not that they're... But if a man... Okay, no, no. I know what it is. If a man asks out a girl because he's interested in her... Yeah, fine. Okay. Then I think that he should pay for the first date. Okay, but why did you say the sex thing? That's worrying me. Because of the fact that how much work a woman has to do and how much money she's spending on herself to look presentable to this guy. Oh, I see. And it's also up to her because she might not care. Yeah, yeah, She might be like, whatever. But there's a lot of guys who are out there... Like, this is in reaction to a lot of the things that guys are saying. Right. Where they're like, oh, um, you know, we should be splitting the bill. And it's just like... You asked me on this date. Because it was mutually decided. You know. You know. See, this is where people get caught out. Because I definitely would. I would. Att- God, it really depends. I haven't been single in seven years. Would you go on a second date with someone if they didn't pay for you the first time? It really depends on their personality. Because I was never like a person that was looking for a relationship. Okay. Like I would like go out with people i might depending on what age i really think this, this depends on what age you are i and depending like where someone's at in their financial situation like it's yeah. just so difficult like it's because a lot of people are like a no-go if you didn't pay for me on my first day yeah then i'm not coming. it just depends what you're looking for because like to me like you don't have to be in a relationship with someone in order to love them and be in a physical relationship with them. Mm. Like, I was never looking for someone to be in a relationship with, so I was really looking for someone to spend time with. So I wasn't caring so much, like, oh, are you paying for this? I think it just naturally would happen that way. But there was a lot of times where I was like, oh, I got this, blah, blah, blah. You know, Mm. like, I felt comfortable doing that. But I do understand not wanting to be in a relationship where you're saying, hey, I'm devoting all of myself to you. I'm not having fun in any other areas of my life. I have this one life to live. I'm giving it to you. Now, if I'm giving it to you, what I would like in that situation is if I didn't have to work. So for us to be in this relationship monogamously, then I'd like to be with someone who's paying the bills. To me, that totally makes sense. But if but there's nothing wrong with like being in a non-monogamous relationship with someone. You know, people aren't really thinking of it that way. They're like, oh, well, if I'm going to like do anything with this guy, then like he has to pay all the bills type of situation. It's hard to explain. I know you're looking. I'm at so this. confused. I'm so confused. Okay. So basically like I was never looking for a monogamy. So I wasn't like. But why does monogamy mean there's a payoff? It's not really there's a payoff. It's just that like. Now I'm like, I have this whole life. I'm doing all these things. But so do men. To... Men have a whole life. They're doing yeah, of things. Yeah, but they're the ones that want you to be monogamous. Oh, God, I thought nail I know. I was like, I was like <laughs> my <laughs> nail popped off. Um, if they're the ones that want you to be. And this is my personal. This was my personal. Oh, it's your personal yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So like, to me, like, I had this whole life, um, like, living, you know, and I had no problem. Being in a relationship-ish with a guy where I wasn't monogamous. Got it. And it's just like, you know, I'm not expecting anything of you. Like, we're hanging out. Like, we're having fun. But I'm not about to, like, 
be like, okay, I'm going to be in this monogamous relationship where I don't get to like go out and have fun. I also have to go to work and I'm committing myself to only you. But it's like, I would have also said, hey, let's just still continue this on. We don't have to be monogamous. Like you could do what you want. Why? I could do what I want because like, I don't know. I was having fun. Like, it's just like, to me, like, I don't find anything wrong with a woman deciding that for herself, if she's going to commit herself to someone, then her preference could be, yeah, you... I don't think they're linked, though. No, but it's just like, there's... But also, I don't think people should be, you know, saying that that's how it should be. Yeah, I think that they can be linked. I I don't think they have to be linked. I think you can just say, like, okay, I want to be monogamous, but... I know I've always wanted to be, but if I'm going to marry you, I actually don't want to work. Yeah. Right? And I want you to pay. Don't you think that's an unfair expectation to have on a man, though? See, that's the thing. I would never say that to someone. Okay. I would never say that. Okay, okay. It okay. was just something that, like, happened. You would never... So you do you think it's unfair for women to say, I'll only be with you if you pay for everything for me? I think it would be weird if they said it. But not but like they expect it. Um, you know, I don't think it should be an expectation. I think it, I think it can be a desire. Um, why? Why can it be a desire? Yeah. Because a lot of men naturally do want to do that. Um, do they? Yeah. My husband, like, he literally told me to stop working, like, so long ago. Why and, did like, you stop working though? It was stressful. You know, okay. it's just like, but I, I stopped working for my bills. Okay, like, got I it. continue to work. Like, yes, I do exactly. stop. We work on the business together. Yeah. But I'm not the one who has to stress about the bills. And I think generally what a man wants and needs more than anything is someone to nurture them. And like, it was very hard for me to be fully nurturing mm. when I just got home at eight o'clock at night because I was working all day. Like, I really couldn't. There was no way I was going to be the, like, girl he needed after working full time. Like, I just couldn't. I was just being stressed someone out. he needs to nurture him? It was just a – I think it was just a very natural, mutual situation. Mm. It was just, like, what he wanted was all of my time. Right. And what I wanted was to not feel stressed out from work. And we loved each other and we loved being together. So it was like, hey, like – Okay. Why are you bothering to work? Like, I can take care of it. And I'm like, yeah, actually, that's cool because I don't want to do that. And I'd actually kind of prefer to, like, chill Mm. and be a relaxed person and have the energy to have fun with you and spend your money. Yeah, it was a joint decision, right? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. There was nothing. I never would have said to a guy, like, oh, like, I expect you. Never. Like, Mm. I never felt that way. But there truly are so many men who have for some reason so much stamina to work and they really just love taking care of a woman and there's so many women who don't have the stamina to work and they like taking care of a man like emotionally yeah and then there's vice versa there's so many variations of it but the issue is when it becomes like this set in stone thing that's in society and toxic yeah because i think that I, i i just think like the cost of living now is so high. It's insane. And to and for us to say, well, men should pay. I think no, which we're not. It's so by the way. But I would never want to raise a son to be like you. One hundred percent always have to be a provider. No, I it's do totally... think that a lot of men have it naturally within them that mm-hmm. they do. I agree with you. Mm-hmm. But I think that the narrative puts a lot of pressure on men and causes a lot of problems. This and yeah. this is what I'm saying is that mm. I understand where part of the whole misogyny came from because it was yes. a little bit of this backlash, especially in like um like hip hop culture with like Cardi B and you know, like broke boys don't deserve whatever. It's I can't imagine the pressure that men are under to provide. Mm. It cannot. Because it was hard enough as a single girl in my 20s providing for myself in an apartment that I was splitting with my friend. Mm. It's such an immense amount of pressure. Yes. And societally, they should not have that pressure. However, there's just randomly just these guys that want to do it. And it's just like, Mm. it's fine for women to want to get together with those guys that want to do that. Yeah. But no, it should absolutely not be something that 
men should feel pressure to do whenever they go on a date with a girl to feel like, oh, okay, well, this girl is going to expect me to pay for everything. Exactly. And I think um, we should let go of that expectation as well, that a man should. What is, um, a, what is a mature man? I think a mature man. Okay. A mature man is someone who's comfortable with himself and is comfortable with whoever his woman wants to be and whoever his woman is. Because there's a lot of guys who have retroactive jealousy about their women. Have you heard of this? No. Basically, they're jealous of the things that their women have done in the past. Mm. Very immature. If um, an immature man is constantly defending the things that they're doing that are hurting their women. Like, if you are not... If you're not so aware of what is making your woman unhappy and you're not very fixated on making sure your woman is not unhappy, like, uh, no, a mature man has to be fixated on making sure that his woman is happy. Right. You know, if you're constantly defending the things that you do to make her jealous and miserable, Mm. if you're telling your woman that she's jealous, then most likely you're doing things to make her feel jealous. You know, like if you're constantly blaming your woman most likely you are not a mature man there's so there's so many things that go into what a mature man is but it's really a lot to do with emotional maturity like Mm. can you have a conversation with them can you bring something up to them without them blowing up if you get into an argument do they let you calm down you know there's so many things (laughs) there's so many things are they addicted to social media are they constantly on their phones? Do they have substance abuse problems? Not that that's really a level of maturity. Yeah. Sometimes it's just yeah, substance abuse. Addiction, yeah. Um, but there's, there's such a long list. There's such a long list of what can make a man mature. But it really is – you'll know. Like – you know when you're with a mature man because you feel safe. You know, mm. they're not afraid to tell you how they feel. And they're not going to lie to you about it. You know, if they don't want to be monogamous, they're going to tell you. If they do want a relationship, they're going to tell you. You're not going to feel like, oh, why isn't he texting me back? There's going to be no games, you know, which is not easy to find. No, it's not. And I think now we're in a a world where we are constantly playing games with each other. Mm -hmm. What are some of the toxic traits in men? How do you know you're with the toxic guy? Okay. First of all, you know you're with a toxic guy when you feel it. Like, you can feel when you're with a toxic person, and you can hear that you're lying to yourself about it. Like, you can hear the excuses. Like, if you're making excuses for the guy that you're dating, it's probably toxic. So, if they are... If you look over their shoulder, and they're scrolling, and you see a bunch of girls on their For You page, they're toxic. If they're like, oh, yeah, like... All these girls are just, like, my best friends. I don't know. You made a clip, actually, saying that men and women can't be friends. I fundamentally disagree with that clip. So here's the thing. What I, when I said that, what I mean is that there was a study that showed that men and women can't just be friends. So generally, Mm -hmm. and now, of course, I have male friends. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. My point is, is that the study was hilarious. And it was basically showing that when they interviewed these friends, the men and women separately, they interviewed the man and the man said that he he is attracted to the female. Right. And then they interviewed the female and she was like, oh, he's not attracted to me. We're just friends. And she had absolutely no idea that right. the guy was attracted to her. Right. Like all of the friendships, the man was attracted to the woman. And I think it's very true for a lot of friendships. I've almost never had, like, a male-female friendship where the guy, like, hasn't admitted some sort of attraction. But on my end, there was, like, this isn't happening Mm -hmm. type of vibe. Um, I My point of that was to give the women that are dealing with a lot of these guys spending time separately with other girls away from their woman – And giving the woman the excuse that, oh, it's just a friend to give them some sort of backing. Right. Because it's the guy could so easily just say, she's just my friend. 
But I do think that in a lot of situations, it's inappropriate for the guy to just have these female friends that he's hanging out alone with unless you are so sure You're so sure that there's nothing going on because you Mm. could be. There's so many platonic relationships, Mm. but so many of these guys are just lying. And the amount of girls in my DMs, the amount of girls in the comments, like, yeah, he ended up cheating with that girl. Oh, his best friend. Yeah, Yeah. that's his new girlfriend. I I actually agree with you on that point. So yeah, that clip, that makes sense because I think that clip was like so tiny. It was like men and women can't be friends and I have a lot of male friends. But do I agree with you that if you are spending a significant amount of time with another girl, like if Nick, my partner, was spending Mm -hmm. a significant amount of time with another girl, like every single day and she was objectively attractive, do I think that it would be wild that that something would be going on? No, I don't. Do you know what I mean? I don't think so. You're a bigger woman than I. No, as in he's not. So thank yeah, God, yeah. Um, I'll kill him. Yeah. Um, See, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. it's just no, like no, what? It's it is inappropriate. Listen, it's, it's just like it's what's a normal the reason. Attra- it's a normal thing. Yeah. If there's an attractive guy and you're an attractive girl, mm-hmm. you are going to be attracted to each other. Yeah. Like I do agree like, on that, and yeah. I also do think that you've got to be super careful mm-hmm. because there are some people in the world that you will have natural chemistry with. Mm-hmm. Right, like that, I can meet a guy and just be like, "Oh fuck, I have a lot of chemistry with you," and mm-hmm. I have to make that decision: do I hang out with him or not? Yeah, I, there's nothing going on. I've just met you, mm-hmm. but we do have chemistry with random people that we meet. Absolutely, they don't have to be the most good looking. They can just you can just have a spark. Mm-hmm. But it isn't within your control to then say, listen, I'm not going to hang out with you because I do think that we have chemistry. Yeah. I'm not saying I fancy you. I'm not saying I love you. I'm not saying I want to cheat with you. Yeah. I'm just saying that, you know, same with women. I meet some women and I energetically really get along with them. Mm-hmm. And I can spend time with them because I'm not interested in them in that way. Yeah. But with men, I, I I have had instances where, you know, I'm, I'm aware of the fact that there you know, could be chemistry there. There could be chemistry if you hang out all the time. Exactly. Of and course it's, there could it's be. It's psychological. Actually, yeah. you know, what um, spies used to do in the day is they would just plant themselves near the person that they wanted to infiltrate. And just by seeing someone's face repeatedly, it makes you feel so comfortable with a person, even if you never talk to them. And, like, you wonder why there's so many workplace romances, things like that. If you're around someone for very, you know, repeatedly, you're going to have emotions. You're going to have chemistry. It's going to create that. Mm. And I just don't think that, like, if as a woman you decide that you don't want your partner spending time alone with a female that you don't feel comfortable with, you should be able to say that. And how do you bring that up? Because some people will be like, you're a jealous psychopath. Then they're an asshole. Like, really? if, if you're going to say to your woman you're a jealous psychopath, <laughs> yeah. then, like, like, you're not a good guy. And I also think if you're saying to someone, hey, listen, look, I you really do, love you. You know what you say? You say the opposite. It, yeah. You're like, okay. So, and you pick someone. You find someone that you know has traits of a person that they have some insecurities about. Now, I I have some very toxic advice sometimes. I'm not going to lie. You just, like, you know when you know that your man is just, like, he would be jealous of this guy? Right. You'd be like, okay, bet. So how about I start hanging out with this guy all the time, and that's my bestie, and we go on little little dates. He tried to hook up with you, or you've hooked up in the past. Yeah. Then it's just, like, how would you feel? Mm. That's what guys need a lot of times is a little how would you feel. I agree. I do agree. But I also think that, going back to the non-toxic advice, Mm -hmm. if you bring it up with your with a person that you love and a good man, Mm -hmm. and you just say, hey, listen, this is making me feel really uncomfortable, they will be willing to understand and listen. Absolutely. Right? And you'll be able to have a normal conversation, Mm -hmm. and they will be able to either prevent that from going forward or you know tell you a reason as to why they think that perhaps you're you're feeling a little bit emotional a little upset and you know for me if if that happened which it hasn't because it just we haven't had that situation mm-hmm. i think that nick well i was i think he would say to me you know why are you feeling insecure about it like what what's going on mm-hmm. you know like what's what's upsetting you yeah i have had that with a toxic ex and it's mm-hmm. been a disaster where they've been like you are a sociopath See, and that that is a good test to see if you're with a yes. toxic guy. Yes. If you feel uncomfortable about something that they're doing and they tell you that you're toxic, like you're jealous and you're crazy and you're insecure, they're not a good person. They're a toxic person because, like you said, like a mature person will say, why? What's wrong? Like, what's going on? Like, why do you feel that way? A lot of the time when you're in a toxic relationship, you have no idea. Oh. 
The craziest thing happened to me, I was remembering this the other day. I remember buying a backless top from Zara and mm-hmm. it was a crisscross, yeah. right? And it was like, so it was sh- like, this is my back and it was just up to like the back of my bone that it was backless. It wasn't the whole thing was backless. Yeah. And I remember putting that top on and my boyfriend at the time said, I think you're looking for attention by wearing this top. And I was like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. So then, because I thought it was so barbaric what he said, mm-hmm. I went to go and ask his sister. And she said, I don't think it's inappropriate to wear the top. Yeah. So I didn't wear the top. I didn't think anything of it until the other day I had this flipping flashback memory. Uh-huh. And I was like, what on earth? And this top is so, so, like I would wear a fully backless dress, mm-hmm. like backless up to here now, right? Yeah. And... So much of the time, we do not realize we're in toxic relationships because we are just so used to this behavior. Mm-hmm. And it happens slowly, like little comments right. like that, where you're like, here's the problem. And this is what I've talked about, is that they do things that's not bad enough for you to leave. You weren't going to leave that guy because yeah. he said, oh, that's an inappropriate top. But it's the type of thing where now you're just starting to realize that this guy has is not mature Mm. you know you're kind of in a toxic relationship now but it's not toxic enough to leave so you just have to wait until it gets toxic enough and it's horrible and they'll also apologize they'll apologize for doing those things so but then they still end up being that same person down the line like i was in a terribly abusive relationship and the other thing that happens with it um that i just found out recently they will wait until you're stuck with them to start bringing out their toxic qualities. So like you can actually be completely aware of every red flag. You can do everything right. And then you can marry a person and they could still bust out with the most toxic and abusive qualities. They can hit you in the face. Like Mm -hmm. I got in a relationship with this guy. There was some red flags, but it was nothing abusive. Then I moved to Florida to go live with him. Like, quit my job moved all of his stuff down moved all of my stuff down the first day i got there he punched me in the face and i was stuck for six months with this guy and this isn't okay i forgot about this is the other reason i'm very passionate about defending women in these situations is because i'm a very like strong person Mm -hmm. and very intolerant of anything type of person like i stand my ground but even i got into an abusive relationship and even i was gaslit to the point where like he punched me in the face and convinced me that he did not punch me in the face and i'm like gaslighting is so real wait what do you mean what do you mean about that he so i was on i was texting my friend it was like when i first moved down there and i'm laughing about something and he was like what are you laughing about and I'm like, what? Like, I'm just talking to my best friend. And he's like, didn't believe me or something. I made some remark and he literally just leans over the couch and rocks me in the face. And it was just so traumatizing that you almost lose memory. Like, you just are yeah. so out of reality mm. that you can't even keep track of what's going on. Yeah. So I go to leave. He's trying to drag me back, whatever. He was like, what are you talking about? I didn't hit you. I didn't touch you literally convinced half convinced me that i made the whole thing up in my head because your adrenaline is going so much you're like maybe i didn't remember it properly but then as time went on and he continued to be abusive like he kicked my car door in he threw me on the the ground in the gym parking lot he threw a beer bottle at my head um God, I'm so sorry. all this insane stuff that like did not come about until i had quit my job and moved to another state and i was completely stuck And, like, the amount of gaslighting, it's just, like, it made me just realize, like, anything I could do to help these girls get out of these situations and realize that these guys are not correct. You're not crazy. You're not jealous. You're not insecure. This guy is crazy. Mm. And you got to get out of this situation. And a lot of the times, they won't talk to their friends about it. Like, I did not tell any of my friends about what happened because you know that as soon as you tell someone – everyone's going to tell you to leave. Yeah. Then you can't say anything anymore. You can't be like, oh, my boyfriend and I went to dinner. Oh, we did that. You can't talk to them anymore because they're going to be like, when are you leaving? He hit you. You have to leave. So you can't lead a normal life. So you just lie to everyone around you. So to me, I'm this like random unbiased person. You know, my, my DMs are flooded with these girls who are just asking me 
opinions on uh, on their boyfriends or their husbands that are you know anywhere from texting other girls to beating them why because i'm someone that's not going to judge and yeah. i'm someone that they could talk to that is that you know when they talk to throughout the day is going to be like when are you leaving your husband and and what advice do you give them that there's abuse hotlines that actually help you tactfully get out of the situation because a lot of it is like you know they they do it because you're legally stuck with them why they have kids together they are married or like they're financially tied to each other mm-hmm. and these places will literally um like i think every state has one of their own okay and they they'll do like shady stuff to like help you get out of the situation like they'll they'll do crazy things that you wouldn't even be able to think of and the only reason i know is because my mom's a social worker and she used to do this stuff for people like she was helping women get out of abusive relationships and they had to like scheme these guys in order to get the women to safety how did you get out i literally left in the middle of the night like i packed my stuff i i thought that i you know covered my tracks enough that he wouldn't find me but then he did even like right now as i'm talking about this i'm like oh my god like is he gonna is he gonna hear this and then like i'm gonna get but i'm like i think my tracks are covered enough um like he literally stalked me after that came to my job um luckily i had left early that day but he what? was like waiting outside my job like i found out from like my coworkers that he was waiting there stalked me at my gym like chased me down um literally like car like a high-speed chase chasing me down in my friend's car psychotic but i literally just got to a point where i realized you cannot just be empathetic to people because a lot of these abusive people what they do is they'll be horrible to you until you decide to leave and then they play on your empathy and as soon as you know they don't feel love from you anymore. They just break down and they're like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to kill myself. Um, you know, I can't live without you, this type of thing. And you have to just realize that they're manipulating you and you just cannot be empathetic to everyone. And you have to realize that not everyone can change and most people can't change. And you can't just let people walk all over you just because you feel bad. Have you heard of Stockholm syndrome? Yes. And it's very much like that. And there's trauma bonding, you know, like. What is trauma bonding? So, especially when it's something like coming from abuse, like, you know, it's like you have something to relate to. Uh, like, say you were in a traumatic situation. Like, say you and I were in a traumatic situation together. And, and you know, Touch we'd, would not, yeah. we'd, like, we'd have this bond where, you know, we experience something that other people haven't experienced, you know, right. that emotion that we have, we can't really talk to anyone aside from each other about it. Mm. But these people get trauma bonded to each other because, you know, sometimes it's mutual, but a lot of times it's one person abusing the other. And they're in this traumatic situation that only the two of them have experienced and they can't talk to anyone else about. So they feel bonded to this person Mm. because it's the only person they could talk to. A lot of times, like, because of what I was saying, they can't talk to their friends about it because they feel embarrassed, Mm. but they can talk to the abuser. And it's a lot like Stockholm Syndrome. Like, you just get attached to – and, yeah, the other thing is because they bring you down, they bring you up. You know, it's like they abuse you, they make you feel bad, and they're also the person that you're looking, that they're looking to, to make you feel better. Yes. So, because it's like, you know, when someone hurts you, in their mind, that type of person, the only person that can make it better is that person. If they apologize. But when they apologize, now you feel even closer to them. So you never get out. Yeah. Is this the same as narcissism? Or is it different? I think a lot of the – I think you have to be somewhat narcissistic in order to do that to a person. But you can definitely be narcissistic without being an abusive person or, like, a sociopath. Right. But what people don't fully understand about narcissists is that a narcissist isn't necessarily full of themselves. They're not always egotistical. A lot of the times, they're – very down on themselves and they're always looking to other people to bring them up or they're saying to you oh your back is too exposed you know how does that make me look or you know i'm concerned that you're getting more attention than i am or maybe you're liking the attention from other people that i'm not giving you Mm. so basically what it comes down to is the spotlight needs to be on them 
So whether it's spotlight where you're making them feel better or a spotlight where they're saying, look how amazing I am, but it's usually the opposite and people don't get that. So they end up with these, they're like, oh, he couldn't be a narcissist. Like he doesn't even like talk about himself that highly. Why? But does he use pity as a form of manipulation? Mm. How do you spot a narcissist? What are some of the like the common things that we can see in relationships and we're like that, or not even relationships and people? Okay, so one of the things is if you feel like every time you're making plans with this person, you're constantly worried, is this person going to enjoy themselves? Like, is this person going to like make the entire situation about them? Right. Like you make the plan and it's not about what you want to do. It's not about what you would enjoy, but is it something where they're not going to make you feel terrible that you plan something that they're not happy about right um that's just like a very little thing um if they're very offended when someone says anything negative about them or where you feel like they need everyone to like them Mm. or if they're constantly pitying themselves and needing you to pity them another random one is do they yell at you in public like, is, does this person get loud when they are slightly disrespected? Like, if you say some little thing that, like, to you is absolutely nothing, completely neutral, and they take it as disrespect, and then they make sure everyone in the area knows that they're not being disrespected and that they're going to yell at you to make sure that everyone can hear that they're not going to tolerate that. Right. It's a lot. What if someone's always finding a fault in you? Um, if someone's always finding a fault in you, then they probably hate themselves, to be honest. Um, why? Because you just can't be a happy person and looking for faults. Because, like, someone that's happy needs to be happy with themselves. Like, you can't be happy if you don't love yourself. So, if you're if that's the way your brain works, if you're always mm. looking for flaws in other people, then you're always looking at flaws in yourself. Why? And you're a miserable person and you just can't find joy in situations. Yeah. So you're just looking for reasons why you're not having, why you're not happy. Mm. So they think, oh, well, it must be because you're not good enough. You're why? jealous. You're insecure. Why? You give other guys attention. That must be why I'm not happy. It could be me. It's you. It's so hard when you're in a toxic relationship because actually healing from it is the hardest part. Healing away from the up and down, mm-hmm. the fun, crazy roller coaster. Yeah. You know, going to a stable, normal relationship seems boring. Yes. It seems like you're missing out, mm-hmm. you know? And there's ways around that. Like, just then don't be in a relationship where you don't have fun. Like, literally just yeah. find someone. Like, find what you like to do for fun and find someone that also likes to do that for fun. And you guys do that together. Mm. Because the healing part from a toxic relationship, I think, is the hardest part. Mm-hmm. How, how did you do that? I spent a lot of time alone. Actually, I remember the very first – I think the best way is to heal while you're in the relationship. Like, don't put pressure on yourself to break up before you've gotten to a good place on your own. Mm. So I remember, like, he would just do the weirdest things. Like, we had plans to go to this cute little town and go to lunch, and I was really excited about it. And he just decided he didn't want to go. No, I don't want to go. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go. So I took myself on an adorable date, and I sat on the patio of this restaurant, and I had a nice salad and a glass Mm. of white wine, and I was like, I do not need this man to go on dates. Like, I had an amazing date by myself. And that was the very first moment that I realized I was healing myself out of the relationship. Right. And I just, from that point on, I realized how enjoyable life can be without anybody. Yeah. And I started doing that all the time. And after we broke up, I was not looking at all for a relationship. Like, I had some downs where I was feeling a little lonely. But I would just go out. I would go out by myself. I didn't care. Mm. And that's how I eventually met my husband is because I just kept going out by myself. Um, but really just in, if you can't enjoy spending time by yourself, you're not going to be able to get into a healthy relationship with someone else and with yourself. hundred percent. It just can't happen. But how do you kind of let go of that constant roller coaster of emotions? Because 
I understand what you're saying in terms mm-hmm. of spending time by yourself, mm-hmm. but there are there are some people out there who have just probably left a really toxic, narcissistic man. Yeah. And now they're feeling like they are so unworthy. They don't know where to begin because that person has completely drained them of their confidence. Yeah. What do they do? Okay. I have a few things. So first of all, you have to remember exactly who you are and what it felt like to never have met this person in your life. Because we just get so wrapped up, like as if this person is the entire universe. What if you never met them? Mm. Who is this person? Who cares? Like, you had your entire life going before you met this person. It was random. Like, it's not meant to be. Don't worry about it. If it's meant to be, it was meant to make you realize that you need to heal your relationship with yourself. And you need to feel like you're the only important person in your life. Right. You also have to think, what if someone did this to my best friend? How would I feel about this guy? Because we, our bodies biologically, even if you just sleep with someone, your body starts to release chemicals that make you attach to them because it thinks that you are about to raise a child with them, which is going to take 18 years. So you need a lot of emotion. uh, You need a lot of chemicals to push you towards that person. So it's like oxytocin, serotonin, they're bonding hormones. It makes you feel good related to that person so Mm. that you stay with them to raise the child especially if you're not raising a child with them you have to look past that i think that was something huge for me that i realized that these emotions are just chemical reactions right like it doesn't need to go further than that Mm. and you have to detox from it you literally just have to give yourself time to not feel these hormones towards this person anymore Mm. Um, And also, you have to look at your life as if you just have one life. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen. But what if this was your only life? You're going to spend it with that guy who said you're trash or didn't let you wear that. You can't even wear a backless shirt. And this is your one life that you have to live. So true. No. Like, you have to think back on, like, when you're older. And now it's not just this one life. Now you have your 20s your 30s your 40s Mm. you know you have certain times in your life where you're going to even want to do certain things like most likely in your 70s you're probably not going to want to like go to mykonos and go to a club or something like that but when you're in your 20s 30s 40s you might want to do that yeah so it's like are you gonna like look back on your entire life and realize that you spent it with this one guy who didn't let you live it who didn't let you be happy so true you can't you never know what's going to happen when you leave that toxic guy. It's always right? something amazing. Always. Always. And you've got to remember, look, if you're struggling to leave a relationship, mm-hmm. you've got to remember that in order for someone to come into your life, somebody needs to leave. True. If I want someone to come and sit in this chair, yeah. you're going to have to get up. Yeah, i got to get out of here. You both can't be here, right? Yeah. And it's the same. Mm-hmm. If you want someone amazing to come into your life, You've got to let the other person leave. Mm -hmm. And it's scary and it's uncomfortable because you don't know how long that chair is going to be empty. Yeah. But I guarantee you, having that same person in that chair is never going to, the behavior is never going to change. And, you know, almost never. It's, yeah, like, look, no, if someone is abusing you and they're narcissistic, it is never going to change. Mm -hmm. It is never, ever going to change. You're just going to have to learn to cope with it a little bit better. That's Mm -hmm. all that's going to happen. You're going to learn to cope and you're going to learn to accept. And why should you accept? Yeah. Why should you cope? Yeah. Who's told you that you have to suffer and be this martyr on the planet? You don't. Mm-hmm. And so I think that, you know, dealing with a narcissist, you've just got to first identify if they are one. Mm-hmm. I would always say seek guidance and professional help mm-hmm. and then figure out a way to leave when it's right for you. I think, you know, what you just said about that non-judgment element is so important because mm-hmm. in our logical mind, you tell me right now and someone's hit you, my logical mind is going to tell you to leave. Exactly. Because you're not emotionally attached to that person. But I know how hard it is to leave. Mm-hmm. You feel guilty every day. You feel like you're going to ruin someone's life. Mm-hmm. And you feel like if you leave them, you're not giving them the chance to change. We all want to see the best in people. We all want to believe them mm-hmm. when they say they're going to change. Mm-hmm. So I think having that external person to guide you through and to give you the space to deal with it in your own time is Mm -hmm. is so important. Absolutely. What's the one piece of advice or what's the one quote that you live by? Quote? Hmm. You know what's so weird? Okay. 
So when I was 24, my ex that I had been with, it was my first boyfriend. So we got together when I was 14. Then 10 years later, he ended up passing away. And I was absolutely devastated. And for some reason, that song that was like, life is but a dream. I don't even know. Like, it just like stuck in my head because everything felt like it just was not real. Right. Like nothing was real anymore. And I was just questioning everything. And I was like, you know what? Like, I need to just always do what makes me happy. Yeah. And I've always made choices that were like, absolutely not conventional. Like, and it's, you know, I've been a terrible employee. Like, I can't be an employee. Like, I'm bad at that. Like, I just, I've quit every job I didn't like. Like, if I don't like something, it's not happening. I always do what I want to do. Right. And I remember that song, just like, life is but a dream. It just kind of, like, played in my head because really it is. Like, yeah. this reality is completely what you make it. Mm. And you always just have to be doing whatever it is that makes you happy. It's so true. Like, if you're not happy, what are you doing? So true. And what's what's one piece of advice you'd want to give to young women who are struggling in a relationship right now? Hmm. What I would say, if you're struggling in a relationship, and this is what I always used to tell myself, if it's meant to be, it will be. You can always come back to it. Like You don't realize when you're young that you can come back to a person Mm -hmm. and it's actually easy to do like even it doesn't matter how many people you end up with or they end up with if it's meant to be and you love them like that you can it could be 40 years later and you can come back to them so if you feel like it's not the right time and place then you can feel comfortable you know moving on and doing something else for a while until you mature until they mature until you're in better positions in your life where you're ready to be in a monogamous relationship so true you can always come back to each other and if you feel like you can't then maybe it's not that strong what's meant to be will be Mm -hmm. and this is the last podcast for the yeah i'm joking i'm just trying to i'm trying to i was trying to find a poem but no honestly i think everything that you said especially around that kind of element of leaving i really resonate with and i hope that the girls who are watching this, who are struggling to do right now, feel a little bit of solace and comfort in our conversation. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much. My pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Did you your, like my accent? It's like your best American accent. Oh my God. British thanks. people are so good at doing American accents. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, we'll test you all soon. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you.